So we got
you've been super patient and uh, I want to I want to show you that I appreciate that and do something about Rome specifically I would hate for you to he, he's been waiting for so you've been waiting for like weeks now so I really apologize I just um, I've been coming across so many other interesting stuff that I knew probably once I got into Rome, once I entered the gates of the city, I wouldn't want to leave because there's so much to explore. Okay, so uh, I think maybe the book sounds perhaps might be better than the ear-to-ear talking, so you guys let me know what you think. I just switched it over, so up till now you've been listening to the ear, ear to ear, uh, talking. But now we have book sounds, which I personally really, really like. So the Roman sickness, how, how the humble mosquito helped to bring down an empire. Countless thousands of words have been written about the reasons for the fall of Rome. But a decisive medical factor has now been acknowledged. And this, uh, well, before I elaborate on this, let's get into the article. By the beginning of the 5th century AD, the Roman Empire was on its knees. It had already been around for like seven, eight hundred years. So that's a pretty big, long uh, empire. Its borders were under constant attack from raiding barbarians, Huns, Goths, Visigoths, Ostrogoths, Goths, Saxons. Religious descent even had created an irreparable rift. Certainly not ephemeral. This was a long-lasting rift between two halves of the empire, creating bitter enmity between its Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox territories, <laughs> territories, and the Latin West. There was also corruption in the government and the army, and civil wars that uh, that left the empire poorly defended against supposedly inferior enemy sources. But fall is too dramatic a word to describe the lingering process of the empire's decay. And many complex factors indeed played their part. When the last Western emperor was deposed in AD 476, it was the culmination of a long, slow decline. And of course, um, I forget the author, but the uh, the decline of of Rome. I think it's called the the fall and decline of Rome. Was a huge, very popular historical series written in the 19th, or maybe the maybe the 20th century. So uh, there's been entire volumes, thousands and thousands of pages, honestly, um, about this. Actually, now I'm curious, I'm going to find out what it was called. So my point is, 
is that this, of course, as they um, realistically stated, I appreciate this. I already like this book a little more because they're recognizing that there were the, the absolute fall was actually a very complex process, but sickness was no doubt the key player. So in the Asian and Germanic hordes were not the only enemies that Rome faced, nor perhaps the most threatening. An invader of quite a different kind played a crucial role in bringing down the empire. The Anopheles mosquito and its effect on the Romans meant that when the Ro uh, German barbarians finally attacked, they may have met an enemy no longer able to even fight. The Romans certainly knew about malaria, but malaria meaning bad air, I believe. It's actually a Greek term. Well, I think. But they had no effective way to combat it. One writer had even identified its cause. In 40 BC, the soldier and agriculturist Lucius Junius Columella wrote, and neither should there be any marshland near the buildings, and no military highway adjoining, for the former throws off a baneful stench in hot weather and breeds insects armed with annoying wings, annoying stings which attack us in dense swarms, from which are often contracted mysterious diseases whose cause are even beyond the understanding of physicians. But the notion that mosquitoes were responsible for infecting malarial victims didn't come become common knowledge. On its way to Rome in AD 476-467, I'm dyslexic, sorry, the aristocratic letter writer Sidonius Apollinaris reported falling victim to a disease which struck when the wind at Toulouse from Calabria or else the pestilential region of Etruria entered my body. The Romans were certainly aware that some parts of the country were more dangerous than others and during warm and wet months wealthy Romans often withdrew to the country villas in the hills. Hills. I just, sorry. I had to. <laughs> but the, uh, the notion that the pestilence itself was airborne was a misconception that persisted well into the 18th century. And I'll go back to this relief, I promise. Malaria actually means This is called the Dance of Death. The Roman word for funeral meant parade. The anointed corpse was carried on a bier, B-I-E-R, to the family vault and the catacombs, or to a uh, burial in the graveyard. Now DNA in the bones of dead Romans is shedding light on why some of them actually died. Here are a little relief. Hopefully I'll zoom in on it. The dots show uh, modern populations that have more than one in 200 with one of two malarial, malaria resistant genes. Wow, one in 200. Okay, that's pretty significant. So, advance of the mosquito, researchers have identified certain genes that confer resistance to malaria and measured their presence in Africa and European populations. Testing actually shows that gene st that started in Africa, red, 
and the Mediterranean variants are yellow. Um, is uh, is now well established in European populations, indicating that a strain of malaria from Africa, Plasmodium falciparum, must have crossed the Mediterranean. The European gene uh, variant yellow offers only protection against milder forms of the disease. The mix of African and Mediterranean gene variants found in southern Europe fits with the possibility that a uh, virulent African malaria attacked the Mediterranean in ancient times, weakening the Roman population but gradually giving rise to the resistant gene. usually a 
associated with the tropical climates and is most widespread in Africa. Dr. Sarah Tishkoff, a researcher from the University of Maryland in America, has found genetic evidence that Plasmodium falciparum entered Europe from Africa comparatively recently. Dr. Dr. Tishkoff replaces the incursion before 400 AD, but uh, but no earlier than 4400 BC. Wow. Her suspicion is that the increasing trade between Rome and North Africa could have led to the mosquitoes uh, being transported across the Mediterranean on board merchant ships. Just like my uh, the rat population in Europe in the medieval times, I believe I heard of the uh, plague, the bubonic plague being carried by them, coming from Eastern Europe or Western Asia, even. And uh, a much more, a much less uh, profound, impactful example would be all these lizards hopping on cargo ships from the Bahamas coming over to Florida nowadays. Anybody living in South Florida definitely has noticed a large increase in their, um, these, uh, not quite the iguanas that you would see in the Keys, but they're like, they're probably as big as this book with their, uh, including their tail. So they're, uh, you know, significantly larger than the regular little bitty, uh, you know, backyard lizards that we all know and love to uh, wear as earrings. But, uh, yeah, it's no doubt something that could have happened. So there is recent archaeological evidence to the recent uncovering of late, of a late Roman cemetery at a villa in Lugano, 70 miles north of Rome, provides tantalizing evidence of a catastrophic outbreak of malaria there, dated to about 450 AD, in a graveyard site. Along the villa were found the skeletons of 47 infants, most of them premature stillbirths or newborns. The archaeologists decided that the bodies had been buried within days or weeks of each other, indicating a major epidemic of a killer disease. And here we have a little insert of what the malarial disease looks like. The deadly disease, the deadly microbe, would not be dangerous without any tiny insect to uh, propagate it, transmit it. The female Anopheles mosquito carries the parasite in its salivary glands and infects the blood of anybody it bites. Here, the, uh, over here, the 47 remains, infant remains, were found in a cemetery at the Roman villa of Lugnano. Analysis of the burial earth suggests that the bodies had been in interred with one month, within one month, around 450 A.D. It actually looks like it's quite deep. At least, I don't know, at least 10 feet below the ground. The community had apparently been devastated by an epidemic. So the villa was set near the marshes along the Tiber River, a typically malarial zone, so honeysuckle seeds found in the grave told the archaeologists that it may have been dug in the 1700s 
That's so interesting that they could use a little evidence like that and Sherlock their way through uh, to a conclusion. And the uh, summer is the only season when malaria strikes. Analysis of an even of even the best preserved bones was difficult, but one was found. Plasmodium falciparum, this little guy right here. Uh, miscarriage is one symptom of this type of malaria when pregnant women are infected. It had taken the 21st century scientific procedures to prove that an Edwardian academic's hunch could be right. A new form of malaria would have uh, taken the rural communities most prone to malaria by surprise. Instead of throwing off the fever and chills they had come to expect, adult sufferers would die within hours of the onset symptoms. God, that's so brutal. Others would be sufficiently weakened to succumb to other diseases such as influenza or tuberculosis. The infection can also be can also appear to be gastric with symptoms very like typhoid. The way fatalities would have been disguised could explain why there's no clear accounts of a new disease in text from from that time. The bones of the Lugnano Cemetery back up the scientific evidence of Plasmodium falciparum. Jeez, you would think they would kind of abbreviate that to PF or something after the fifth time I've read it. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, in Italy, during that time of the Empire's decline, and if the insects had penetrated as far as Rome, other epidemics must have already occurred farther south, through heavily farmed lakeland. Oh, yeah, through heavily farmed lakeland terrain, the mosquitoes were infiltrating deep into Italy, to a population that was economically, politically, and agriculturally crippled. The disease could well have delivered a decisive blow. At first, the burials were ones and twos, but at the highest level, up to seven infants were found in a single tomb, indicating an epidemic that had worsened rapidly. The burials were hasty, hastily arranged, while one child was laid to rest on a terracotta roof tile. Well. If you're, if you're still watching Nick, you know, obviously that wasn't super insightful into the, uh, I think you, you were interested in a topic about the daily life of ancient Romans, more, uh, just more immersed in understanding what it was like to live back then, so I certainly am too, and, um, I hope this will suffice until I get to a more in-depth episode about what it was like in ancient Rome. And just as a, just as a little teaser again, we of course have the
is in fact a little yeah there's just so much interesting information in this book maybe I just need to go through it a little more rapidly and obviously not read every single word of every article but that might be a little more interesting you guys let me know but Nick I for sure will uh Oh, this is the Crusades right here. We'll definitely be doing more episodes on Rome, just so you know. That's... So... I hope this will suffice for now.
In effect, they were able to get through so much tragedy and disaster. And those genes are inside of you. So just remember that when you're having a rough go of it and uh, you want to give up and, uh, you know, life is overwhelming. It's full of suffering, but it's also full of redemption and meaning and relationships with friends and family and new people. There's so many new people out there that are your truly, truly the same from the same gene pool as us guys. I don't care if I'm from Florida and you're from the center of China. We all carry many more genes that are similar than different. And um, I'd like to think that if we get to know each other, on average, you'd find that we all have a lot more in common with where we want to go with our lives than different. We come from different cultures, but that doesn't mean that we can't look at those different cultures as a bonus, as a way to view the same object from different angles and understand this complex, amazing, fascinating, meaningful world that we live in together. You know, the greatest things in uh, history have happened from, I think, from people that have had the privilege and the leisure of being protected by the barriers of a society so that they don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from or where to get clean water. And that all happens from cooperation. So, just keep that in mind next time you, uh, you come across a stranger and recognize that cooperation is the wisest way to play the long-term game that's going to lead to our flourishing as a species. Be the best you can be, guys. And look for that little ray of optimism in the world. It's hard to find a lot of times, I know. Believe me, I know. But uh, you can be that little ray to someone when you give them a bright, warm smile as you pass them on the street tomorrow. I hope you have a great night and an even better 